So, here we find ourselves in the room where we will conduct our ritual. The first thing to do is to make a ritual circle. In this case I will use some flour. It's also possible to use other substances like stone or chalk, uh, salt. The important thing here is that we make the circle with intention. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but we have to intend to close the space. So you should be thinking or meditating about the circle. So, now that we have made our circle, we can do two things here. Um, we need to seal it more tightly and we also need to clean it better. So first we'll start with the sealing. Um, what needs to be done is that the edge of the circle needs to be more than just a physical line. It needs to become a more of an energetical line. And the ceiling is always done against a variety of energies. And depending on the type of ritual or the type of energies you want to contain within the space, uh, you would create a different type of uh, seal for the circle. In this case we're just going to do a little healing ritual, so it doesn't have to be an enormously powerful protection. To be able to create any protection, we need to be ourselves on all the, all the levels where the energy will be and where you want the blockage to happen. So in this case, I want the whole scala of human energy. So I want the lower willpower energies, the desire energies, the higher emotional energies and also the mental energies to be contained or kept out of the circle. So I myself need to exist on all these levels. So I need to in a way stretch my awareness, be aware of my body, of my will, of my emotions, of my thoughts and of my spirit. And being aware in this way My energy is in a way, um, you could say, like a rainbow, from the lower to the higher region. And what I do is I will walk around the circle. And as I go around the circle, I'm in a way sealing it with my own energy emanation, which I'm anchoring into the flower. So the flower is now in a way receiving the energies which I'm radiating on all these different levels. So I allow the energy to flow out of my hands into the circle. This way I'm charging the circle. It's also possible to charge a circle by using your ancestors or power animals or gods or goddesses or saints, angels, it is all possible. Now go for a second turn, make the seal a little bit more stable, a little bit more strong. third cycle okay. 
So before we go any further, we should make sure that we were successful in creating a good barrier. Because if ultimately if the barrier doesn't work, then the energy inside the circle can become polluted or the energy will leak out of the circle and we cannot build up the necessary energies. And another problem is a leaky circle, which is leaking out energy, also tends to attract uh, spirits which feed on those energies. Um, so, now that we have the circle, try to feel it. Try to feel if there is indeed, also on an energy level, a cylinder of energy around the space and try to feel also weak spots because it can be that at times your attention was wavering a bit was a little bit distracted and if you feel a weak spot you just spend some time strengthening it put out your own energies again give it to the circle so it can absorb your energy and form a stronger wall of energy. It's just keeping things from going in or out. Okay. So now that was done, we will need a method of entering the circle. Um, because ultimately we want energies to be able to go in and to go out. And to do that we need an entrance and an exit. You can have a separate entrance and exit in your circle, but more often they're in the same location. Depending on the tradition you will want the entrance or the exit to be in a different place. Um, in, for instance, the Native American tradition you tend to want it in the east because this is the place of the spirit where the spirit enters. Uh, you can also have it in the south because this is the place of safety, of Mother Earth, of protection. Uh, in the western tradition it is also possible to have an entrance in the west because then you are in a way facing the place of the spirit, the place of power, the place of wisdom. So there's different traditions which all have different entry points. What is very important for the entry point is that it has a guardian, it has a filter, so that the things which pass in have to be approved by whatever power is at the entry point. So I will just make an entry point down here and I will place a guardian there. Um, in this case I will place an animal there, so I think of the animal guide, the power animal in this case, but it can also be a saint or a god or some other being who would like to help you in this ritual. And I allow the energy of the animal to flow through me way to use my energy body as a conduit and place the energy of the animal now along the doorway, along the threshold. So this is the entry area. where the energies will be filtered. Um, what I usually find is that um, once I have an intention to do a ritual, depending on the type of ritual, a different type of guardian will present itself. So I don't always work with the same type of guardian in every ritual. And often when I do a healing ritual for a person, actually that person's uh, spirit guides will come and help to clean the space and to uh, protect the space. So we have a closed circle now, we have a guardian. 
Now it is time to clean the space within the circle. So first I enter, and in entering I also submit myself to the guardian that all energies which should not be brought into the circle according to the guardian are left behind. So I'm in a way pushing myself through a filter, through a sieve as I step into the circle. So I always try to get people to do this slowly and in a relaxed, open manner so that all the energies in their beings are visible to the guardian. It is nice if you have a physical representation of the guardian that people say hello to it or greet it at the entrance. So, once inside the circle, I feel it's a lot more calm here because there's less influences, but also it is just as polluted in here as it was outside. So the first thing to do is to get rid of all the energies which are within the circle. 